Hello and welcome to your first hands-on experience with wireless sensor networks. Today we're going to be reviewing a little bit of XB API mode, that is using computer language to structurally and unambiguously collect data or configure XB pins from computer programs. Let's take a look at what we're going to need to complete the lab. You will need at least one breadboard, hook up wire, preferably divided instead of four colors, three or four LEDs of different colors, one Arduino, one USB-A to B cable to power the Arduino, one 20K ohm resistor, a photoresistor or light dependent resistant, LDR for short, two breakout boards, one XB configured as a coordinator API, one XB configured as a router AT. The XBs should belong to the same PAN ID as in the wireless messaging lab. One USB-A to Mini-B to configure the XBs and a computer. On previous labs, we have been configuring the XB as AT and transmitting in transparent mode, where everything was sent as typed to the other end of the link. This way, the configuration was easily readable and understandable for us. Nevertheless, if you want to collect data from the XB via a computer application or a script, we should ensure the correct delivery of that data. Computers love numbers and very structured data to avoid ambiguities. The XB application programming interface is just a simple set of rules that will allow us to structurally and unambiguously interact with our wireless sensor networks from computer applications. It does so by ordering the data according to a protocol. When working in API mode, data is no longer a number. Data is now contained in a stream of bits, carefully arranged as expected by a receiver. In this lab, we will be using an XB to get measures from one of its pins and transmitting it via XB Direct to a coordinator API XB, which is connected to an Arduino board. But before getting into the data structure, let's build the circuit. We're going to use one breadboard this time. But if you feel more comfortable with two, just make sure to power the other XB. Place the XB or explorers with as much separation as you can in the breadboard. This way we free enough holes to make the connections. Connect the 3.3 volts and GND pins of each XB to the corresponding holes in the breadboards. Then, power the rails in which you connected the 3.3 volts legs of the explorer. Repeat this step with the GND. We want to light up LEDs according to the received data. Let's connect three LEDs to the breadboard. Plug the shorter leg of each LED to the GND rail in the breadboard, and the longer ones to the digital pins in the Arduino board. Place the resistor and the LDR in series over the breadboard. Connect one leg of the resistor to the power rail, the other leg in the same electrical point as one leg of the LDR, which has the other leg plugged to the GND. Plug a wire in the same electrical point as the resistor and the LDR, and connect the other part to the digital input-output zero port of the router ATXB. Finally, connect the digital out of the coordinator APIXB to the resection pin in the Arduino. Similarly, connect the digital in pin of the coordinator APIXB to the TX pin in the Arduino. We're going to collect the LDR measures with the router ATXB, transmit it to the coordinator APIXB and process that data in the Arduino board. Then we would like to light up LEDs according to the received data. To accomplish this, we will need to tell the router ATXP to periodically take measures from digital input output pin 0 and transmit that data. In the XCTU window, enable channel verification. Set the pin digital input output 0 to analog. Set the sampling rate to 255 milliseconds. 
In the Arduino IDE, we're going to write code to receive and add upon the receive data. First, we define the pins to which we connected the LEDs. We're also going to use built-in LED 13 as a debug LED. We declare a variable to store the value reported by the LDR. In the setup function, we set the LED pins as output pins. Start the Arduino serial communication interface at 9,600 baud's. If we go through the loop function, we start with all LEDs off. Then we check if there's something of at least 21 bytes waiting for us in the serial interface. If so, we look for the start byte that is a 126 of hexadecimal value, or what is the same of 7E hexadecimal. As a debugging tool, we're going to instruct the debug LED to blink one time if a start byte is found. Then, we will discard the next 18 bytes, really 19 because we already read the start byte. This data contains the sender address, the PAN ID, and other transmission information we won't be using in this lab. The next two bytes are the most significant and less significant bytes of the data reported by the LDR. We store the most significant byte and the less significant byte and compute a definite value. The next segment of code contains the threshold for turning on the different LEDs. The LDR reports value from 0 to 1023, so you may want to adjust the threshold according to your needs. We compile and then upload the code to the Arduino board. Try covering or flashing the LDR with a lamp to see how your LEDs react to these changing values. You may be wondering about the data we discarded and how do we know that in byte 20 we expect to see the data reported by the LDR. Don't despair, but take a moment to review Robert Faludi's Building Wireless Sensor Networks, especially Chapter 5, where you will find all the API frames structures. Once you get a grip on all the API frames, try lighting up an LED connected to one of the legs of the router ATXB. Are you capable of creating a frame? There's also a very helpful material at the end of this chapter in the course guide. Tell us how we got in the comments.